But joining me now for the moment is uh, somebody I, I've, I've been wanting to get on the program for a long time. Um, and it's an issue that has become, well, I guess it's personal for me. I'll explain in a second. But it's also an issue that besets a number of children and adolescents and young adults. It's something that none of us knew about when I was growing up and yet explains an awful lot about an awful lot of people. Um, and that is uh, Darren Bull. Now, Darren Bull is the board chair of ADHD New Zealand. Um, attention Deficit Hypersensitivity Disorder, Hyperactivity Disorder, and Attention Deficit Disorder. They usually go together. Yes, that's right. Um, and he joins me on the show today. And yes, you want to listen to this. Um, welcome to the show, first of all, Darren. Um, Thank you. How long have you been going? Um, we've actually been going for 42 years. Um, and you can imagine what it'd be like to be a parent and have an organisation to help you in the 70s and 80s when no one would have believed in ADHD. Um, about four years ago, we stepped into the name ADHD New Zealand and we've grown from, say, 300 members to today probably 32,000. Yeah, and the reason you've got 32,000 members is because one assumes that they are largely the parents or caregivers of children and adolescents suffering from ADHD and I guess some uh, themselves. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah, correct, correct. Um, when yeah. I was growing up as a child, and many of our listeners as well, we just thought that the boy, because they're usually boys, not always, but they're usually boys who was behaving badly, was behaving badly because he was a bad boy from a bad family. Uh, we now yeah. are a bit more sophisticated about that, and some of them are just bad boys from bad families. But yeah. I'm interested in the profile of the average ADD, ADHD sufferer in this country. Where do they come from? Who are they predominantly? So, first of all, uh, it's roughly 5 to 6% of the population. Um, so that would suggest a number in New Zealand, about 260, 280,000 New Zealanders with ADHD. Now, not all of them um, uh, are, are needing help. Not all of them would be aware that they have ADHD. Um, but there's a certain proportion that will need help, and as you described, there are three types of ADHD. The first type, type one, uh, is that hyperactivity um, disorder, which you sort of described. Um, I hate to say it like this, but I went to school in New Zealand in the 70s and 80s. It's that naughty little boy. So you'll see uh, issues that they might have of filtering and controlling attention, uh, inattentive, hyperactive, impulsive, um, and just full of energy. Then, so they're 90% male. Um, ADHD is across all eth ethnicities roughly the same. Is that right? Then so the second, so there, isn't, yeah. there isn't um, any ethnic imbalance at all? It's, 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 no. Isn't that interesting? No. Yeah, it is interesting. Um, and that's regardless. And I'm seeing research from all over the world. And that, that's uh, really, uh, it's just something that hasn't changed. It's roughly 5 to 6% of the population. Now, because um, that must tell you it's genetic then uh, across the human yeah. species because there's no, what you're suggesting mm -hmm. is there's no cultural or ethnic input into those yeah. statistics. That's amazing. Correct. That is amazing. Um, and research has shown uh, recently that it is um, genetics. Um, it, it's uh, when we have bad days with my ADHD son, my wife and I then argue on whose side of the family it is. And yeah. we've got signs on both sides. Same, same, um, same. I'm yeah. Just, yeah. I've got and, a, just, I, should, yeah. I should explain to you, I've got a 13-year-old a son who has got significant ADD, ADHD. Um, yeah. And the really interesting thing is, and I guess, you, well, you would have asked the question too, that, that discussion you've just had, and people will be listening to this as well, that yeah. would suggest that either, you're absolutely right, either you or your wife or me and um, Theo's mother had ADHD. Yeah. Is that right? Or Co yeah. Correct. Or maybe a generation uh, either side or up and down and things like that. Um, and maybe it's two people who may have had it and they come together and they have a person where, as we say in my family, the force was strong um, in, my, in Matthew. So, um, well, just can I ask you on that yeah. too? So, Matthew is yeah. your son. Um, how old is Matthew? Yeah. 18. 18, okay. Um, yeah. Oh, gosh, this is a very good conversation to be having. Um, Matthew's 18. If 
you and your wife, do you have other children? Uh, yes, Georgia, who's 14, who also has ADHD. Oh, gosh, is that right? Because I've got yeah. two older children, two older daughters uh, from the same parents, and they don't yeah. have ADHD. Well, not that... I, no, yeah, it's no, so don't. interesting how it works like that, yeah. So you're saying that generally yeah. all of the... So what's the... Is it just one child out of a family, or is it more like yours? You both have it. Um, um, uh, so it's, uh, I've ne- I haven't seen a pattern. Um, I know someone who has four ADHD children, and I also know someone who has one ADHD child, and the other children don't have ADHD. Um, I don't understand the rhyme and reason for that. It's just the way genetics work sometimes. Yeah. The thing about ADHD and ADD is because um, it was undiagnosed for a long time. Of, yeah. of, of the under 20s, you see, I, I suspect, we're talking this morning about what kids do in their adolescence and the bad and impulsive decisions they yeah. make. With this, particularly we're talking about yeah. the young teen rapists, for example. I, yeah. I suspect that, um, but we'll, we'll talk about that a little bit later on, but just at the moment, would it be fair to say that the diagnosis of ADHD is now much better than it was, obviously, but is it is how well diagnosed is it? As, a, as an estimate, how many kids are now sitting in our schools, uh, in our communities, who are adolescents and children, who you think aren't yeah. diagnosed, but have it? Um, so statistically, 80,000 um, children in our schools um, is the average, and the majority probably would not have a diagnosis because uh, the system is a mess. It is very difficult to get a diagnosis. Sure is. Um, um, we've just done some research, um, and 90% of the parents um, we research of roughly 400, um, 90% said they can't get support and help. Mm. Um, and uh, for adults, that was 80%. And actually, last December, uh, there wasn't a single former district health board in the South Island that was prepared to help adults with ADHD. Um, and that was under the Official Information Act. So it's really hard to get a diagnosis in New Zealand. Um, it's, um, and that leads to harm, in my view, real harm. Yes, it does. Um the other thing is the number of un- undiagnosed adults. Now, as we've got an awareness yeah. of this, um, yeah. there, there must be, there, a lot of people are thinking to themselves, God, have I got it? When they, how, how would they get help? Would they go to the GP or something like that? Yeah, so they'll go to the GP to start with. Um, again, our research shows that only 23% of GPs understand ADHD. And then they will get referred to a psychiatrist yeah. Um, if the GP was onto it, in most parts of New Zealand, they would say the former district health board can't help you. You need to go private. Yeah. Of those of our members who responded, about 55, 60 percent said they had to go private. Mm. And because the public's not helping now, there's huge wait lists in private as well. Yeah. Um, going back to last December, there was only one specialist taking new patients in the South Island which meant that if you're an adult looking for help, it's, um, so I took some of these phone calls, it was come to Auckland or Australia. And I know people who went to Sydney with all the crazy COVID stuff just because it was quicker. Good God. Yeah. Yeah. Um, All right. Now, um, five to six percent of, you've given us a number of 280,000 in New Zealand, um, but only a percentage of that will actually be diagnosed. When When you look at teen crime, what percentage yeah. of teen crime would you think could be connected to this disorder? Because these are adolescents who are going through adolescence anyhow, but they don't have the same yeah. control over their impulses as anybody else, do they? Yeah, correct. Um, so there's no research in New Zealand to suggest anything because this is one issue. Is there's not enough research done in New Zealand. But let's go to the US. Um, in the US research... Um, into teenagers and young 20-year-olds in prison found that 55% had ADHD. Um, There you go. There you go. Yeah, that's right. Um, And worse, as you experience ADHD in primary school, what happens there is traumatic. So you end up in a spiral just taking risks 
uh, you end up in a spiral of underachievement, which takes the next step into crime, I suspect, much easier. Yeah, yeah, you're right. So, yeah. in other words, now the other thing I've noticed with my son, for example, is that whatever the potential that they might have, so however bright yeah. they might have been born, whatever their IQ, whatever their particular skills, yeah. they still don't achieve what their potential is because they do not have the ability to sustain effort and concentration like the kid that's sitting next door to them. Uh, is that what you found yeah. as well? Yeah, that's right. Um, in fact, uh, it's been suggested they have to work 10 times as hard. Um, and uh, which is, I would see that with my son, I would say that that would be true. Um, so they have to, the approach to education has to be quite different. Um, and there, there is, there shouldn't be a problem with that, but there is. Um, but the reason there shouldn't be a problem is, first of all, ADHD children have the standard IQ. There's no reduction in IQ, it's just a normal population average. Yeah. And they also have the actual superpower, if you like, of being creative and, ironically, the ability to hyper-focus. So if you can harness that and teach them the way a diverse child could be checked, um, taught, all of a sudden they can be really successful. Yes, and, yes. Um, Yep. Yeah, and I was, just, I was just going to say, and it really depends on the school um, and the community to actually step into that. Um, and some, I know, actually, my son's school is outstanding. Um, it, we've, we're at the age of, age of eight, we're told he could never read beyond the age of a six or seven-year-old. Um, and now he's doing NCA3 and looking to go to university. Now, I'm not saying that it, that was easy, but North Coast College in particular understood ADHD and they went out of their way to make sure it's a successful learning environment for him. It didn't take much. What, yeah. I've, what I've also discovered though is that school teachers who have an ADHD kid in their class, they might say, yeah. they might say yes, we recognise that, yes, we understand, but they still actually teach them the same as the other 29 kids in the class because they have to. You yeah. know, there is no special, there is no special no. teaching or awareness because they, they still fit into the pattern of I've got I need 30 people traveling in this direction today and if you're not you're out of my class you know go you are being yeah. disciplined yeah that, and that's that is pretty much the norm in the New Zealand education system not just for ADHD kids but for kids uh, who might be autistic yeah. or have um, learning difficulties and I just don't understand how it's got this bad um, like when I went to school I can now identify kids who might have had you know, learning difficulties like ADHD, and they're the ones that were caned and strapped and yep. sent out of class. Yep. And, yeah, and consequently, they haven't been that successful in life. That's right. Yeah. And, and, and yeah, we're repeating the cycle. No, you're absolutely right. Um, mm. it's, it's, it's a slightly mm. depressing tale, though, isn't it? Because there doesn't, yeah. there doesn't appear to be help on the horizon. There doesn't appear to be any extra funding. If anything... Um, as you say, that there's a lack of resources even be able to identify young adults, uh, young children, but also middle-aged uh, adults as well, uh, of A, getting diagnosed, yeah. and then B, getting assistance. Yeah, so there is hope coming um, in, within the next 12 to 24 months. Um, so unbelievably, about a month ago, uh, we had ADHD New Zealand hosted um, a whole of government response to health response to ADHD at Parliament for a day. Um, and very senior government officials in the colleges of GPs and psychiatrists um, and the police. Um, and there was real understanding of the issue and a commitment to actually change this. And it was actually quite an outstanding day um, it took three years of hard work to get there by ADHD New Zealand. Mm. Um, I really think that help is coming, um, and, I, and I believe that, and we're just in the process of setting up a program that can really start delivering some of the outcomes from that day. Um, the other thing um, that I noticed... It's a, I mean, the, this, the other thing is you've been a bit invisible. I'm not not blaming you that for it at all. Yeah. But... Um, there's a lack of also, I guess, regional support networks as well. Do you? Yeah, yeah. And you'd be aware of that, obviously. Um, what? Yeah. What is the solution to that? Do you do you need 
to get some sort of government funding for your organisation that then allows you to set up those yep. regional support networks. Is that right? Yeah, this is twofold. And you're correct, we are invisible, but we're actually incredibly tiny. Um, we have one person paid 20 hours a week, the rest is volunteers. Yeah, yeah. Um, so we're talking of government about being able to spread and um, be able to form that. But we have a couple of support groups, and the key to su support groups is having them, first of all. Um, and the second of all is a community who wants to step into it. And the ADHD community at times um, uh, don't like getting support. They'd much rather keep it really personal. And one of the things we're focused on is reducing that stigma. And as one person said to me uh, in a support group a couple of months ago, I didn't realise that there are people like me out there. You know, the, they say uh, people with ADHD can think that their story is really personal and that no one else is going through that, but it's not true. Um, it is really, really um, important to realise that there's lots of people going through that story. And we run heavily moderated social media groups within ADHD New Zealand Facebook pages. And uh, this sounds really bad, but as a parent, I can go on that after a bad day with one of my children and see that someone else has had a worse day and I can <laughs> offer them advice. Yeah, and yeah. they can offer me advice. But I'm like, well, at least... At least my children didn't break anyone this, you know. No, I was and just. Like, and, it, and so, yeah. What about now? You see, I'm looking at my producer, and my producer yeah. is looking at me, and I'm thinking there's undiagnosed ADD in Shane. And Shane's yeah. looking at me and going, yeah. mate, you're off the <laughs> bloody chart, um, which is yeah. probably true. Um, how, yeah. a, a lot of adults now would probably recognize things like impulsive behavior. Um, you make yeah. stupid decisions and then wonder why you made them. Um, you, yeah. you, you, you flippity jip about, sure. you can't concentrate on one thing and yeah. then you move on to another. And you probably recognize symptoms in yourself that you think, oh my God, I've been doing that since I was seven. <laughs> you know? Yeah. How, how does an yeah. adult listening to this who might think that they have these symptoms, because, you know, I, 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 I'd be willing Shane down there now. Um, and myself, he, see, he would be driving me as well. Um, how would we, how would we actually get to the stage we'd be able to say, is that it? How do we? Because is that it? Well, you see, if how do we get to say, yes, you do, Michael, have ADD, ADHD? Oh, Shane, <laughs> yes, you do. No, I'm, 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 yeah. I'm, you know, I'm Listen, if my yeah. son's got it, I mean, that's yeah. the question you must have asked yourself too. Yeah. If your son's got something yeah. like yeah, that it and is. it's genetic. There's a, you've got a 50% yeah. chance that you've got it too, haven't you? That's right. Yeah, no, I do. And the power is very strong on, on my um, side of the family. Um, so in my view, I probably do have it. And the, the thought pattern I had is should I get diagnosed or not? Um, and I did talk to someone about it. In the end, I decided not to because I, I don't want it to change who I am. Um, I've got some, yes, I'm all over the place. Yes, I can't find my keys. Yes, I can have emotional outbursts. But overall, I think I'm successful in life. So that's because of who I am. And there are people, though, who aren't successful in life because ADHD is a much bigger barrier. And if that's the case, I think um, they should go get diagnosed. Yeah. Um, um, but can and I, I can... I can but, but diagnosis... Yeah. Okay, I'm, say I'm diagnosed. Say I yeah. go off and... And yeah, yeah. So our listeners go off and they get and say, no, oh, God, that's me, you know. Um, <laughs> yeah. And, and really ADHD have, have other problems, like forming relationships. They have difficulty in sustaining yeah. relationships and yeah. friendships. Um, reading the yeah. social cues of other people. So they've always been slightly yeah. isolated from their peers, for example. Um, can yeah. I, can I, if, but if you were diagnosed... There is obviously, my son's got it, I guess yours as well, there is a prescription of, 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 of drugs yep. that, that are available as well as... Yep. Would, if those people ended up going yep. on their drugs, wouldn't that materially improve their lives? Wouldn't they make better yeah, decisions? Wouldn't they be more rational? Yeah, yeah it can do. Um, and look, I'm not a medical specialist. The best way I describe the likes of Concerta or Ritalin... Um, is for Matthew, it slows his brain down so he can make the right decisions. Yeah, that's um, right. That's right. That's and right. not be so impulsive. 
Yeah. And for people with ADHD suffering from impulsivity, that is a big thing. Yeah. Um, it also helps uh, understand emotions, the emotions they're feeling, and even read emotions and others. So that can be really handy. Um, but it's not the only solution. So, um, you know, there's coaching and counselling, which is particularly important um, as well. Um, there's also micronutrition, which can help people. So there's lots of different solutions, often centred around medication, but um, you may not need it. And now, one thing that you do get is stories of people, you know, zombieing out. Yeah. Um, and generally, we haven't found that with... Uh, my son, but it can happen and that suggests the dosage is not quite right. Um, the medication has improved from those sort of uh, days where people turn people into zombies, um, but it's about working with your doctor um, and making sure you get that right. So you don't see that too much, uh, but you can tell when my son is off his meds because he wants to do um, crazy things like the texts I got saying, I think I forgot my meds, I need to tip a bucket of water over my science teacher as he walks past. And I'm like, leave the class now, <laughs> I'll see you in 20 minutes. Um, and so, they, you know, it really does remove that impulsivity if done it the correct way. Okay. Um, thank you for talking to me. Um, I... I will talk to you further in the future. I've had an amazing response just to this interview um, from people texting me. Yeah. Um, and we will talk more about this issue. But the reason why I said it is I was thinking mm. about Jaden Mayer, the, you know, the teen rapist who's been in the things. And I yeah. was thinking, listen, the imp it, it sounds like he can't control his impulses. I mean, if you rape five 15-year-olds, you definitely yeah. can't. Um, he had 30, yeah. 30 psychological reports. We don't know the, the tenor of those reports. Uh, is, is it a particular concern for parents of teenage boys and girls yeah. who have, are going through adolescence that they make these sort of wrong, muddle-headed um, and promiscuous decisions? Yeah, look, it is a real concern. Um, and the problem is, and I don't know Jaden's story other than what I've read in the media, you know, that's the end of the road from a, probably a series of wrong decisions and poor, poor experiences in the education sector as well. So imagine if, I, let's just say he's ADHD, and I really don't know, but if we could help him when he was five and six, it would lead to positive outcomes. Yeah. Now, ADHD in teenage boys and young 20s can be a real issue because... Um, teenage boys in the young 20s are, are way more into risk-taking activities. Um, and then if you put ADHD on the top, it can create a formula that can be ultimately destructive. Um, and really, you know, it doesn't need to be. And I think the debate about his prison sentence or not um, misses the point is that most teenagers don't get to a state of life where they do that. And there's something gone wrong along the process that we should step into as well in debate. Yeah. No. Listen, it's been fascinating. Thank you very much. I mean, the mm. the amazing part is that um, we just this country amazes me in some ways is that we we exist as silos. No one talks to each other, and yeah. yet the justice system yeah. should be talking to the education system, should be talking to the uh, yes. health system about. And and we could just stop so much bad things happening in the future if those conversations were happening yeah. now. But um, all power to you. Yeah. Can I say? Thank um, you. And, and Appreciate Darren, the opportunity. Listen, um, listen, stay in contact. Uh, we'll, you're, you're, yeah. Uh, because what you do is, is God's work and you certainly need some funding. It's ridiculous that you're only funded for 20 hours of administrative assistance a week. That is madness. She works 40 hours, trust me. Oh, yeah. Of course she does. That is madness. Yeah. yeah. Darren, yeah. nice to talk to you, mate. Best of luck Thank to you. Thank you. Look at yourself. Bye. Okay, bye-bye. Um, all right, that was Darren Bull uh, from, um, well, he, as you heard, fronts or is chair of the um, uh, sort of a advisory, no slash, more of a support group really for ADD, ADHD sufferers. There will be a lot of you out there um, who will have suffered or are currently suffering from ADD, ADHD, and you've never been properly diagnosed, but you know, you might listen to that and go, or you might see a son or a daughter or a relative. Um, it's a very high percentage. Boys usually outnumber girls by about four or five to one. Um, but
but I often look at youth crime and I was just thinking this morning of Mr. Mayer preparing for the show and that's the reason I got Darren on and I was thinking, yeah, wait on, there's a 16-year-old that couldn't control their impulses and he knew he was doing wrong but he kept on doing it. Why? Uh, and maybe that compassion that came from the Crown Prosecutor is not misguided? I don't know. You tell me. 